In this video, I'm gonna tell you seven ways you can buy bulk inventory just like I do with remotes for your reselling business, and I'm gonna give you the secrets I've used to buy bulk inventory for over a decade. All right, welcome back in everybody. This is the video I get asked for probably the most on this channel and through my social media and emails. Where do I buy bulk remote controls or where do I buy bulk inventory in general? You guys know that I have bought Everything from sports and trading cards, for those of you asking, yes, we're still actively selling them. Postcards, postcards, sports and trading cards, sports cards, postcards, remote controls, tons and tons of clothing, including a 30,000 piece purchase that I made last year. How do I buy it all? Well, let me give you seven ways. Lucky number seven ways. You don't have to buy remotes. You don't have to buy clothing. You can buy whatever you want and you're gonna find it in one of these seven ways. Number one is thrift stores directly. I don't mean buying on a thrift store shelf. What I'm talking about is walking in to Goodwill, to Salvation Army, to Savers, to whatever you have around you, even a mom and pop store, a, a single owned store by you know just a, a one off owner. Go to them and ask them, hey, I'm a buyer. I will come in your store and I will buy all the remotes that you have, I will buy all the sports cars that you get. Whatever it is you're looking to buy, walk into these stores and tell them that you're a buyer. Or even ask them, what do you get a lot of? What do you have a ton of in the back? What can you not sell fast enough? What stuff do you get consistently? Nine times out of 10, some of them will say no, but nine times out of 10, they will work with you. In fact, the Goodwills in my local area actually have pallets and Gaylords. That's a Gaylord. It's a pallet in a giant box. They have these Gaylords and these pallets full of shoes, purses, clothing, um, plush animals. You name it, they pretty much have it in the back, at least in my area. Some may not. And they will sell them to you for 500 bucks, 400 bucks, 300 bucks. I bought a Gaylord of clothing piled up. This is on my YouTube channel years ago. And I think it was like $300. I backed my pickup truck up. The Gaylord was loaded in. They had a little forklift. They lifted it up, loaded it in the back of the pickup truck. It barely fit. Drove it home. There was probably like a thousand pieces on there. When you do the math, it's like 33 cents a piece. I threw away half of it, donated it, trashed it, ragged it, scrapped it. But I got like 500 pieces, which made it 66 cents a piece, 60 cents a piece. And there was some amazing stuff, a Burberry trench coat that I sold, an, an authentic one, tons of brand name stuff at the time. Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Gucci, I found all sorts of stuff. They were selling pallets of uh, purses and handbags and wallets for like 500 bucks. I don't know if I'd buy one from Goodwill, but you get the point. So that's number one, go into the Goodwill, go into the thrift stores, ask them if they sell pallets, ask them if you can buy all their neckties, all their hats. You might walk in and be like, hey, I buy hats, I love hats, and they'll have you know 20 hats out on the shelf, and all of a sudden, they're like, oh, we don't really sell that many hats. Nobody buys hats. We have thousands in the back. Boom. Number one, negotiate. Make connections. Keep their phone number. Text them. Give them a business card. Give them your phone number and tell them to save your number. Do it right in front of you, right in front of your face. Put it in their phone and remind them when you have tons of stuff, even if it's not the hats you want, if you come across something else where you guys get a ton of it, just message me and let me know what you have and I'll, maybe I'll come take a look. It's tip number one, guys. Number two is right along the same lines and it's estate sales, but I'm not talking about walking into estate sales and buying items one by one by one, although that's a great thing to do. Talk to the owners of the estate sale companies. If you guys aren't on estate sale email list and you're not getting notifications about estate sales, Google the words estate sales Texas, estate sales Florida, estate sales Miami, whatever it is, your city and your state in those areas, and you will come up with locations, estatesales.net, where you can go in and search by zip code and find the local estate sales. And nine times out of 10, they're run by actual companies or families or people that have these services. And you can get on an email list or you can save their information. You can call them, you can talk to them. Do the same thing because one, there's a lot of times, if you guys remember a few years back, I bought four giant garbage bags of neckties. Um, I think it was like 1,400 of them. I paid $100. He sold them to me for 25 bucks a bag. That was an estate sale company guy that remembered my information, knew I sold ties, called me and said, hey, I've got these four, or four bags of ties. 
I'm never going to sell these ties at an estate sale. I'd be lucky if 20 or 30 of these sell at an estate sale. Do you just want to come buy them all? And I'm not going to worry about putting them out. Just get rid of these four bags. I was like, yep, on my way. It was 45 minutes away. Bam, $100. There were some ties in there that were $20, $30 ties. I had that money back in like a week. And then I had 1,300 ties. I built boxes, 13 boxes of 100 each. I sold them for like $75 and $90. And all of a sudden, I had like $1,000 in profit. And I sold all that in like a couple weeks. So that is a big tip. It's an estate sale. You might see a trend here talking to people and making connections and making sure they save your information and they contact you. They're not going to call you tomorrow and say, hey, come get these 10,000 Louis Vuitton purses. But three months from now, you might get a call that goes, hey, do you still buy purses and ties? Because we just got a house with a whole bunch of them and we'd like to sell them off. Also, when they have a sale and everything doesn't sell and they need stuff cleaned out, a lot of times they work with people that will clean out everything Um, but if they know specifically you buy certain things, they'll call you and say, Hey, this is the last day. There's 20 purses. Do you want to come grab them? This is how you make connections. This is how you buy more than one thing at a time, walking up to a thrift store and estate sale and picking and cherry picking items. And you'll get better deals because they just want to get rid of all of it. So you can definitely negotiate and use your skills to get it as low as possible. So number three is a little bit trickier, but I've had a lot of success doing it, especially back in the day. And it's storage unit buyers. Everybody here who in the chat is familiar with Wade uh, from Wade's Ventures. Wade is my boy. We've hung out in Vegas so many times. We've gotten a little rowdy in Vegas on some party buses. Uh, Wade is a storage unit buyer. If you don't follow Wade's Ventures, W-A-D-E-S Ventures on TikTok and YouTube, go follow him. Great dude. Uh, He's from the Pacific Northwest. He buys a ton of storage units. I'm talking about hundreds of storage units a year. Literally. He buys like a dozen a month. No joke. So... Wade has a ton of inventory. He gets so much stuff. He's got a pile of clothes and a pile of antiques and a pile of records and a pile of crap. If somebody calls Wade up and goes, hey, I'm a craft buyer. Do you have all those crafts that you got out of that big storage unit? Wade is going to make a deal. Like he's going to sell it all to one guy because Wade has to keep turning that inventory over. So I'm not necessarily saying message Wade or call Wade. Although if you're in Oregon, I believe Wade is near Bend, Oregon. I could be wrong. He could be in Portland. I don't remember where you live. Beaver Creek? Wade, sorry, I have no idea what city you live in. Just know it's Oregon. I'm not saying call Wade, but in your local area, there are storage unit buyers who always buy storage units and auctions. It used to be live. Back in the day, you could show up and raise your hand and go, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, and you could meet these people in person and you could hand out business cards, make connections. Now it's mostly on the internet, so you're just bidding against someone. You'll never see them because they'll go pick up the unit whenever. But what you can do is you can go talk to the storage units themselves, the owners, the managers, and say, hey, A, do you do auctions? If you don't, I'd like to buy stuff and see units. Or B, if you have leftover units, stuff that doesn't sell, I'd like to see it. I'm interested in this sort of stuff. If you see units with tools, it could be an in. Or three, you could ask them if they come across the storage unit buyers to leave your business card with those buyers and have them call you. It's a little trickier, but it definitely works. If you can make friends with the storage unit buyers in your area, there's a lot of them that just want to move inventory. And they might buy a whole unit with tons of tools. And if somebody comes to them and they bought a unit for 500 bucks and you're like, hey, I'll give you $1,000 for the whole unit. They'll be like, whoop, I don't really like tools. I don't deal in tools. Give me my 1000 bucks. All of a sudden you bought $5,000 worth of tools. There's deals to be made. You could also go to Facebook groups, Craigslist, uh, local stuff, and you could um, search around for guys in your area that are advertising, like they're selling a lot of stuff. A lot of times those are storage unit buyers. Think outside the box. How am I going to find a storage unit buyer directly? Well, they're going to sell a lot of their stuff on Facebook Marketplace, especially big stuff. So go in there and find a guy that has multiple, multiple, multiple ads with tons of listings for sale. Generally, you found a storage unit guy. So that's tip number three. All right, we're going to move on to tip number four. Bear with me, guys. This video might be a little longer than my normal videos, but it's full of golden information. Hopefully, you guys are writing all this down and learning a lot. Also, uh, take a minute to go visit my listing site, e-commerce listers, down in the description box. We do all your eBay listings for you. We save you all the time and work. I put it on sale for the entire weekend, $1.25 a listing. The credits never expire. You can use them anytime you want, as many as you want per day, anytime. They never expire. So go check that out. All right, tip number four. So we've done uh, thrift stores directly. We've done estate sales. We've done storage unit buyers. And next we're going to do Goodwill themselves online. So the Goodwill auction site, number four, the Goodwill auction site has a lot of stuff they put up. I know somebody that bought a box of belt buckles for like 50 bucks and sold them for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I don't full transparency buy from the Goodwill online auction site. I have bought one thing from there. 
to resell. I made a few bucks, but um, I never really pursued it. With that said, between the Goodwill auction site, there's a website called HiBid, H-I-B-I-D, and GovDeals, G-O-V-D-E-A-L-S, that is government auctions. Those sites have tons of inventory on them. A lot of times they sell the stuff in lots or they have live auctions. These are fabulous places to pick up inventory. A lot of times it's cheap. Sometimes it's really expensive, but sometimes it's dirt cheap. So add those three websites, the Goodwill Live or the Goodwill Auctions Online, the highbids.com, and the GovDeals, gov.deals or govdeals.com. Uh, just Google search GovDeals, it'll come up. And bookmark those three and check on them from time to time. Even if you just check them once a week or once, twice a week, whatever, you can find stuff on those sites. Those auction sites are great. They're constantly updating the inventory. They're live, they're active, and you can bid right from the comfort of your own home. So that's number four is those live auction sites. All right, number five is gonna be probably everyone's least favorite, but most favorite. So it's definitely garage sales, yard sales, moving sales. You can buy out the entire sale, before the sale, during the sale, after the sale, or if you see the sales that are advertised online with all their pictures, and you see that they're selling a ton of video games or a ton of books, then you can go and make them an offer and call them or message them or stop by during the sale or maybe before the sale or when they're done the sale and go, hey, look, I am interested in books. I'll buy out all your books. I'll give you 50 bucks. Uh, what, would you, what would you take for all these books before you put them out or whatever's left over? Can you sell me for $10? Tons of opportunity to do that, and garage sale, yard sales, and, and moving sales are what I built my business on 15 some odd years ago. Um, before I was ever in a cell phone business or electronics flipping or doing what I do now or on social media, I literally went to like a dozen garage sales and yard sales a week, and I would buy them out, and I would store all the stuff in a little tiny garage that I had. And I would sell it on Craigslist and eBay, and I had a yard sale myself every other week. So I would go out the first week of the month and yard sale and buy them all out. And then I would spend all week listing on eBay and Craigslist and selling stuff. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I had my own yard sales to sell all my stuff because I would buy out a yard sale for like 50 bucks. I'd buy out five of them. I'd have 250 bucks out there, and I'd start putting stuff out in the yard sales for $5, $4. I could do a thousand bucks in a weekend and I'd only spent 250. So I'm up, you know, 750 bucks for the week. And I still had inventory I had listed on uh, Craigslist and eBay selling and making hundreds of dollars. I, off of these yard sales, could easily make a thousand bucks a week between my yard, my own yard sale and my online sales. And that's what I would do. I did that for two solid straight years, building my business from something that just made me like two grand a month, three grand a month, you know, getting started young up to where I was regularly doing five and $6,000 profit months and building and building and building the inventory. So it was a great way to do it and it's something you can do as well. That's tip number five. Okay, number six is probably how I have made 90% of my connections and get most of my inventory. It is social media, it is Facebook groups, it is Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, MySpace, wherever it is that you hang out and that people are at and they're talking about reselling, there's inventory to be had. I know how many people in this uh, chat down in the comments have been in a Facebook group and you have seen somebody say, I wanna liquidate my store, I wanna sell off my store. This happens all the time. In fact, you can search most Facebook groups that have anything to do with selling for the words liquidate, wholesale, uh, sell off, sell my store, all this sort of terms, and you will find people from all the posts, unless the group doesn't allow those posts, that have posted this, and they're all over the country. Sometimes they'll ship, sometimes they won't. If you can negotiate it, and they're selling something that's shippable, and you wanna pay the shipping, and the deal makes sense with the shipping included, or you paying the shipping, you can get inventory. That's how I buy a ton of my inventory. Speaking of, I have a wholesale site where a ton of people do that. It's linked below as well. You can go check that out. It's um, Liquidation Lots for Less. People list their inventory. Or I actually list it for you um, in case you do want to liquidate inventory. I can help you with that. Email me, uh, rockstarflipper.gmail.com. But people list their inventory on that site because I don't allow selling in my Facebook group. But um, you know, my Facebook group is for advice and tips and help, not buying and selling otherwise it would become a spam fest but that wholesale site is for that and if you hang out in facebook groups or on my wholesale site or on social media on instagram and you talk to other people you might come across somebody who deals in remotes but they just happened upon a huge lot of women's clothes that's like high end and good priced and all of a sudden they're like look just give me 300 bucks and it's all yours you're like bam i'll take it if you're not going to deal in women's clothing i do boom social media Obviously, it's all in our pockets in this fancy little phone that we use that we all have stuffed in our pockets. Biggest tool ever. It's how I got all my contacts. Again, I can't tell you exactly where I get my remotes, 
But I can tell you that the guy that put me on my very first source for remotes and other electronics was out of my Facebook group and he was on Instagram. He's somebody I actually followed on Instagram because he did a little bit of selling and he joined my Facebook group and then we connected again like a few months later and I found out what he does and how he does it and I realized that he's just one guy in one state and that there were several guys in his state and hundreds of guys across the country that do what he do or do what he do. Wow. Do what he does. Unbelievable. Do what they do what he does. <laughs> and uh, say that eight times fast. And I was able to then parlay the information about him into looking up all these other people on the internet. And I was able to find all them. And I called them one by one by one. I literally called them and I was like, hey, Jimmy, I heard you deal in electronics and remote controls and stuff. Is this true? Uh, yeah. How did you get my number? I looked you up, buddy. I found another guy that does what you do. And I figured you probably do it and I'd be interested in buying from you. He's like, oh yeah, I got buyers, not interested. Click, click, click. But I found 10 or 15 of them and those are my sources. And they email me once a month. Sometimes they have stuff, sometimes they don't. I could pick and choose. And that's what social media did. Just a Facebook group and an Instagram message. And all of a sudden I had, you know, I might not have had the guy because my original guy sells to me once in a while, but I had what my guy does and how to find more of my guy. So don't always rely on just one source. Get your one source, and then whatever that source does, go find more of that source. And so that is Networking 101, and tip number six. All right, let's wrap up with tip number seven, and this one is an interesting one. A lot of you are gonna hate to hear it, but it's called Retail Arbitrage. If you're not familiar with what Retail Arbitrage is, Retail Arbitrage is walking into a store, like a Walmart or a Target or a Costco, And finding an item that's priced at, let's say, 20 bucks, but it's on clearance for $10 or it's on sale. Or maybe it's just priced regularly, very cheap, $10 item, right? And then you figure out that on Amazon or on eBay or wherever it is that you sell, it's selling for $35 or $40. And you're like, wow, this item's only 10 bucks. I can sell for 35. The fees are going to be six bucks, which leaves me 29. It's going to be a $5 label, which leaves me 24. We'll call it 22, 23 to be safe. I'm buying it for $10. I can make 12 bucks. That's not so bad, right? Well, hello, the shelf has 10 of them right on the shelf. Like, okay, I'm going to buy all 10. I'm at Walmart, right? Buy all 10 of them. Now I've got quantity 10. I can go make one listing, pop up quantity 10. And every time they sell, I will make $12 or $13. And you can go look at the sell-through rate and you can look at how many are selling per day and how many are selling on Amazon. And you can use tools if you want. But if you figure out that, oh, you know, I bought these 10 on Friday, today's Friday, and I sold them over the weekend. They were gone like that. Well, holy crap there's three more Walmarts in my area. Let me go to three more Walmarts and now I've got 30 of them. So you can see how quickly you can buy inventory and scale up using the retail arbitrage method. It's really good method. Uh, It takes takes some capital. It can be capital intensive, uh, which means a lot of money (laughs) because you're buying up, you know, 30 items at 10 bucks a piece, 300 items, you're stocking them, you're listing them. And then you're like, okay, now I got to sit around and wait for the money. But if you you hit on items that are sellers, that the sell-through rate is good. And you can check my channel for how to calculate sell-through rates if you need. It could be a really good way to buy inventory endlessly and you can just walk in stores, buy it, load up and go back. My neighbor who does millions of dollars, literally millions and millions of dollars, he did a million dollars in just December this year. He does retail arbitrage wholly and solely. He drives a Cadillac Escalade ESV, real long SUV. It doesn't even fit in our garages. I don't know how he gets it in his. Uh, He's got a bigger house than me, clearly. (laughs) Um, But uh, he drives around to stores four days out of the week and fills the Escalade. He can come home sometimes with two or 300 items and like four times a week. He's literally buying a thousand items a week sometimes and takes them to his office over the weekend and his employee on Monday sits and scans and lists and sends to Amazon or lists on eBay and the employee just handles the listing all week long and then getting it into FBA and he just goes out and shops and does retail arbitrage. So that's an option. That's uh, tip number seven and that's not a bad option. A lot of people make a big, big living through RA. It's called RA, retail arbitrage. And if you ever hear the words OA, that's online arbitrage, doing the same exact thing, but buying things off of the websites and having it shipped into you rather than going to the store and buying it. All right, bonus tip. If there's any book sellers out there, uh, Katie Reads would be uh, a hater on me if I didn't say this. Library sales. If you're a bookseller or media seller or magazines or CDs even sometimes or VHSs, library sales, library, library sales. People say library, I love it. Library sales are amazing. It's my bonus tip number eight. Library sales for media, go into libraries, find out when their sales are. They usually have them scheduled. Same with churches, anywhere that has 
a mass amount of books. You can find out when they have their sales and you can buy tons of books that way. If you need more tips, I'm not a bookseller. I hate books. Sorry, Katie, I hate them. Go check out her channel. It's Katie Reads. I'll link her below as well. It's simply K-A-T-E-Y-R-E-A-D-S, Katie Reads. She knows everything there is to know about books. Awesome seller and uh, go check her out. She has a YouTube channel as well. I would be amiss if I didn't mention the library and book sales. <laughs> Tip number eight. As always, thank you everyone for watching. Sorry if the video was a little bit long, but I wanted to make sure I gave you everything and all the information in the world. And so in the future, I can just link this video to anybody that asks me where I get my remotes or how I buy bulk inventory. And hopefully this helps all of you with your questions to me about how I do just that. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button below the channel. Share this video out into the greater good of the reselling world. Please share it on your social medias. It means the world to me. As much as hitting that blue thumb and turning it blue, making that thumbs up go bing. Subscribe to the channel for future videos. I'll be with you all weekend long. Thank you guys again. Have a wonderful Friday. Check out my listing site down below. Check out Katie Reed. Check out all the links. They're really great down there and they will help you out. And of course, Monday and Tuesday is the free tax accounting workshop virtual event totally free with licensed cpa mark ii not your dad's cpa make sure you reserve your seat before the end of the weekend down there in the links as well and i will see everyone next time